the Jada and Stitches show. Sometimes our granny squares need just a little something extra before they're ready to be put into a larger project. Maybe that's a little bit of extra sizing and a row of granny shell stitches too much. Maybe it's a unifying row of color, or maybe it's just a little something to punch out that square shape that differs from the rest of the granny square. Well, a row of single crochet is often the best answer for all three of those scenarios. And today we're gonna to show you how to add a row of single crochet to a regular granny square. It's nice and simple and easy. It doesn't take up much yarn. And sometimes it's exactly what those little granny squares need. Now, in order to add the row of single crochet to a granny square, you need a granny square first. And we're not gonna show you how to make the granny square today. We're just focusing on that border row of single crochet. So if you need a granny square tutorial, we've got links to several of them in the description box down below. Without further ado, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, grab our granny squares. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will add a row of single crochet to a granny square together. <laughs> to add a border of single crochet to a granny square, you want to use the same weight yarn and the same fiber yarn that you used for your square. So it doesn't have to be the same color, but it should be the same weight category. For example, this is a size four medium weight yarn, and so is this, and it should be the same fiber. This is an acrylic yarn, and so is this. You want to use the same hook as well that you use to make your regular granny square with, just so your stitches are all the same size. Then you're going to want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. In terms of how much yarn you need per border for granny square, this is the rule of thumb that I use. For every five shells in the last row of the granny square, I need approximately one yard of single crochet border yarn. So for example, there are 16 shells in the last row of my granny square, and 16 divided by five is roughly three, three and a half. I always err on the side of a little bit more. So I need around three and a half yards of yarn to do a single crochet border on this particular granny square. Once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're gonna take our border yarn, start with a slip knot on our hook. And we're gonna join with a single crochet in a corner space. You can use any corner space, but I like to use the corner space right before my fastened off yarn, just so I can get the weaving in of that tail over and done with sooner rather than later. Take your hook, leave that loop on your hook, place it through the corner space, pick up a loop, and single crochet. And that's joining with a single crochet, easy peasy. Before we leave the corner, we're gonna finish the corner treatment of this square. We're gonna single crochet, Chain two, that's just to keep that little corner space going and to give you a nice right angled corner in your square. And two more single crochet, all worked into the same corner space. So two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. And that gives you a nice little right angled edge. Now, for the rest of the square sides, you wanna put a single crochet in every single stitch all the way along. If you have chain one spaces in between your shells, like I do, that chain is a stitch, so you do want to work a single crochet into it, but you can just work the single crochet right into the space. If you've made a smaller version of a granny square where you do not have chains in between your shells, so it's just three double crochet, three double crochet, etc., don't work a single crochet into the space, it's not necessary. Single crochet into the top of that chain three, so you don't want to miss it. I'm going to work over top of all, both of those little short tails. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches there of that shell. And now the rest of the row is pretty clear to see. There's a space, so I'm going to single crochet into that. And now I'm going to single crochet into the tops of each of those double crochets there. It also sometimes helps in your head to count it out. Count out a single crochet for each of the three double crochets in that shell, and then one for that chain one space, and then a single crochet for each of those three stitches, and then one for the space. And I am still working over top of that tail. You can see it right here. And finally, a single crochet into each of those remaining three stitches along that first side of the square. 
When you get to the next corner, you work two single crochet, chain two, and two single crochet all into that corner. Now you can really vary up what you do in the corners, but you want to make sure all four corners are treated the same way. So if you start with two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet, make sure every corner gets two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. And I like the two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet, because it helps to give that square that nice right angle, and it gives you something to kind of work with when you're joining all of your squares together. The rest of the square is the same. You just single crochet into every stitch all the way along, not forgetting the chain ones if, you're, if you've got chain ones there. But remember, when you're leaving a corner, don't miss the first stitch. Sometimes your, your corner stitches will sit on top of that first stitch or kind of lean into it. And you don't want to miss it because it will throw off the stitch count of your square. And if you are joining your squares together into a project that really does rely on a specific stitch count along the sides, like a blanket for special borders or something, then you want to make sure that all four of the sides of every square have the same number of stitches in it. And one of the easiest ways to lose track of stitches or to miss one is by accidentally skipping this guy right here, this stitch that is the first stitch outside of a corner. Two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet in the corner. Pull back on those stitches if you have to in order to not miss that stitch and keep going. A single crochet in every single stitch all the way across. When you return to the beginning where you started with your single crochet as a join on, make sure that you grab that first single crochet that you made and slip stitch to join. Then you can fasten off and weave in your tails. Or you can continue to add more rows of single crochet or even different stitches. But this is a simple row of single crochet. You can wait to block your squares after they've been joined into a project, or you can block them as you go. Either way, that little row of single crochet adds a nice clean edge to a regular granny square. And now you can easily stitch them together or sew them together into a larger project. In that case, you can either work over top of the short tails down the road, if you've got more crocheting to do, or you can take a moment and weave them in. Make sure if you've got a different color here that you're weaving in those tails underneath stitches of the same color. That way those little tails will completely disappear. simple, pretty quick, and it's a nice way to just finish off a regular granny square. It cleans up those edges, it gives it a little bit of mm, interest, and if you've got a whole bunch of different colored granny squares that you want to put into a single project, and you want something to unify them all, sometimes that is the best answer for it. We hope you enjoyed this little quick tutorial on how to add a row of single crochet to a regular granny square, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye guys! Hi everyone, this is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you, have a wonderful day.